Model steam engines and boilers, a compilation of interesting and useful information when building model steam engines and boilers. This one's all about fitting displacement lubricators to model steam engines, plus machining removable top caps for water tanks. This item that I've just been working on, I've actually been re-threading it, is a PM Research 90 degree cast elbow. I always have to use a quarter by 40 threads per inch tap to re-thread these elbows because the threads are too tight. I would assume this is because the American standard of quarter by 40 is probably different from the British one. When working on very small brass engines like this, you have to be very careful, because even though the thread that exits the engine is quarter by 40, the thread that goes down into the block of the steam chest is a lot less than that. I've replaced the fibre washer with a copper washer, and now all I need to do is rotate the fitting into the correct position. And if you're a beginner to this sort of thing, remember this is a very small brass model engine. Do not apply too much force. At this stage I have a choice as to which way round I want to fit the lubricator. So just to see what it looks like, I'm fitting it in this position. I removed the drain plug so I could rotate the unit. The more I looked at this lubricator in this position, the less I liked it. I even tried putting a PM Research elbow on the end of the valve, but no, this is starting to look a little bit like a trumpet. I don't like the piping to be too fussy, so I'm not going to mount the lubricator in this way. Instead, I'm going to turn it round and mount it with the valve facing the operator. We all make mistakes, said R2-D2 as he climbed off the pedal bin. And now when I refit the lubricator, it looks a lot better. So I think on all of the engines, this has to be the orientation, with the steam valve facing the operator. Time now to fit the valve to the vertical engine, also known as ISIS. And once again, as usual, I'm re-threading the elbow with a quarter by 40 tap. It's worth it though, because I think that these very small cast elbows look really neat in a model steam engine application. On this engine, I left the fibre washer in place because it was in the right position. And you will notice that I'm not putting much pressure on this elbow. Too much pressure will shear off the fitting. When I screw the tap into the elbow, unfortunately, the main body of the lubricator fouls the steam chest bolts. What I need to do is make a special nut that fits on the end of the valve before it goes into the steam chest. And for this, I'm modifying a union nut. I've machined away about a third of the union nut, and here I'm using a tap in the tailstock to position the nut accurately in the chuck to allow me to drill down the other end of it. This twist drill is quarter of an inch in diameter and I'm just drilling part of the way through so that when the nut is mounted in place, this nut will also support the valve. On the right of the picture is the adjusting nut and on the left of the picture is a union nut, very much like the one that I machined the adjusting nut from. I always coat my threads in Loctite 542 and that way there is no chance of them leaking. And you can also now see why I took the trouble to drill the end of the nut so that it looks like it's part of the fitting, rather than it just being a plain old nut on the end of the tap. Now I can easily screw the tap into the elbow by hand. Then I use my Barco spanner to just nip up the nut against the elbow, so the displacement lubricator is well and truly fitted to the engine. In this clip I'm showing the approximate positioning of all the parts on the baseboard. And the very meticulous viewers out there may notice that the aerial engine is the wrong way round. This, I assume, is the front, the part that says aerial on it. But if I put the engine this way round, this piece of brass on the front plus the flywheel masks everything that's good on the engine. Just to be on the safe side, I thought I would contact the owner to find out which way round he thought the engine should go, and he agreed with me. He said he'd rather see all the moving parts clearly. What I'd probably do, though, is turn the fancy brass part round so you can still see the word aerial, and I think this will look OK. This clip is a bit self-indulgent and playing past the parcel without actually having to pass the parcel to anyone else. And look what's inside. Two very nicely cut pieces of aluminium, three inches in diameter and five eighths of an inch thick. And I'm going to use these to make the top caps for the condenser and the water tank. Why use aluminium? Well, the top of the boiler's aluminium so they will all match. And once the copper parts are painted black to match the boiler, I think the overall visual effect will be quite good. 
On some plants it's okay to leave the water tanks in copper, but in this case they need to be black. To start the machining operation I'm using the tailstock chuck to position the blank in the forge or chuck. I'm using my old Smart and Brown 1024 lathe, which is the larger of the two lathes that I have. Mainly because this blank will not fit in the three jaw chuck on my Boxford lathe and unfortunately I do not have any outside jaws for that chuck. The first part of the job is to take a facing cut across the aluminium bar. Once I'd faced the aluminium bar stock, because I was cutting on the outside edge I slowed the lathe down. And this is the part of the aluminium cap that fits into the copper part, so I need to turn this to an accurate fit. It needs to be a smooth push fit into the top of the copper not too tight and not too slack. Please insert a girlfriend joke here. This particular cutting tool does not really cut very well on a left hand cut, but it cuts very well on a right hand cut, so I'm just pulling it back towards the right and I get a good finish. The question is now, does this cap fit in the copper tube? I will try it. This piece of copper tubing is not the condenser, it's the water tank, but it's the same size, so it's okay as a gauge. In this clip I'm using a file to remove the sharp edge and please note whenever you file in the lathe make sure the file has a substantial handle. Time to fit the component the other way around in the chuck and I'm using a soft hammer just to seat it and make sure it's square with the jaws. And once again the first thing to do is to take a facing cut across the front of the work. This top cap is for the condenser and it needs to be machined to look just about the same as the one on the top of the boiler, except smaller. You may have noticed that I keep squirting the aluminium with something. This is WD-40. Paraffin, or WD-40, or white spirit, is the best cutting lubricant I've found for aluminium. I'm using WD-40 because it's conveniently in an aerosol can. Time now to first of all centre drill the piece of aluminium and drill through it a couple of drill sizes below one inch. And that is because if I drilled the hole all the way through using a one inch drill, Apart from the fact that the tube would be a bit of a rattle fit, it would fall all the way through into the condenser. I'm now using a boring tool part of the way through the aluminium to make it the correct size to be a snug fit for the chimney tube. A final test fit using the copper pipe confirms that the hole's the right size. So that's the inside done, now it's time to turn the outside. Plenty of lubricant and a very sharp cutting tool is the order of the day. I need to get a good finish on this component. I almost forgot, what I need to do with this component, using a milling cutter in the milling machine, is mill a deep slot and this will clear the fitting in the copper tube. The steam inlet union on the condenser needs to be as near the top as possible, but I also need to leave a generous amount of metal on the top cap so that it pushes firmly into the copper tank. In this clip I put the part in place so you can see the effect of what it's going to be like. I will shorten the chimney tube to be at the same height as the boiler chimney and I will also make a brass ring, just like the one on the boiler, to fit around the top. So here are the finished items. I've only just started the polishing process, there's a bit more to do yet. But I think they look okay, and when you look at them at the side of the boiler, they're quite a good match. There's a final machining operation to do on the condenser top cap. I need to just reprofile it slightly and make it a bit thinner to match the top cap on the water tank. And that's it for this one. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.